coming up. A positive drug swab means an intimate body search for this passenger. Please don't make any sudden movement. I will be going into your groin at some point. Over a thousand kilos of cocaine is seized by customs in the UK each year. And Gatwick is a prime point of entry. Sniffer dogs are used on the front line in this fight against Class A smugglers. He looks for cocaine and heroin, so he's a Class A drugs dog. Trace smells or large amounts of uh, that kind of scent, he just, that's what he goes for. This passenger was stopped by immigration officers and has now been brought into customs to be searched. Sniffer dog Rossi picks up a scent from one of his bags and gives the signal to the officers. But picking up a scent isn't enough. Officers must find the drugs before someone can be charged. UK Customs, OK. Is that your bag, yeah? Who paid for your ticket? Yeah, I paid for it, but somebody asked. Someone booked it for you, but you gave them the money, yeah? And how do you know this person? How do you know the person who booked it? It's a close friend. He's nervous and his story sounds suspicious. Just take a swab of your bag, your things. It tells me whether or not you've been in contact with drugs at all, OK? OK, if you spare me a sec again. Basically, you swab the bag. And we have two machines, um, and they tell you whether or not the bag's been contaminated with drugs. Like, just give them the reading now, showing that there's, it's picked up particles of cocaine. Could indicate that one, that they could be a user. Um, at some point, there's been drugs within the bag. There's stuff there now, or stuff on their person. Obviously, you've got to go down every avenue and rule out every avenue. I've got a reading for cocaine from your bag mm. and from your clothes and from your laptop bag. Mm. OK, can I just ask, do you use at all? No. Do you use cocaine at all? Have you used cocaine in Trinidad? No, OK. Finding nothing in the bag, Alex requests authority for a body search. Uh, can I have a request for an SOP, please? If that's been authorised, that's fine. I've given my reasons, gave him four reasons. Why? Nervous to more. Eye track reading, dog indication and he's got very little luggage for two weeks' stay. What I'm going to do now is take him into the search room and conduct a search. OK, I'm not going to touch any skin, OK? I've got no need to, obviously, I can see. But I can just ask you to place your arms out for me. Put your palms up into the air, OK? Please don't make any sudden movement. I'm going to do one side at a time. I will be going into your groin at some point, OK? But I will make you aware when I do that. OK, again, I'm going into your groin. OK, if you want to take a seat for me, please. But smugglers don't only carry drugs on their bodies. We swapped the inside of the shoes because, obviously, you have swallowers who come into the UK with packages inside them. Packages give out like sweat and they go into your pores and you sweat through the bottom of your feet. So it can give a reading to say that there's possibly packages inside. So it's another area that we test. It's another frustrating result for Alex, but this man's troubles are far from over. OK, if you'd just like to wait by the bench for me. Back to immigration now, yeah, and then they'll make a decision whether they land him from there. But from our side, we're happy. So, from, from if you got disappointed on every one person you stopped, you'd be extremely disappointed and you'd probably lose the enthusiasm to keep looking. So you just get back out there and start again. Stop another passenger. Customs officers in Dover have an entirely different threat to deal with. Thousands of trucks a day pass through the freight lanes and the detection teams work round the clock to try and spot which ones may have something to hide. One just gone over the top. There it is. I've never seen an unmarked one. The intelligence hub selects most targets, but it's experience which has alerted Richard to this truck, and he decides it's worth searching. Tires in a fridge. I've never seen a, an unmarked fridge on an Omega Pills No Unit before. Never. Especially with tires in. Smugglers often use awkward loads like tires as cover, and so customs have developed X ray machines big enough to scan an entire truck. So we, we might end up scanning it. 
Well, that's a brand spanking new fridge. And, like, that's not a refrigerated load. Hey. A little bit odd. The truck's are under pressure to deliver, so this Polish driver isn't happy to learn his truck will have to be scanned. If it finds anything suspicious, it may have to be offloaded, which the driver's company will have to pay for. They get a little bit aggy about it. They don't, they don't like that we do that. <laughs> the X-ray picks up an anomaly. There looks like there may be a secret compartment hidden in the floor. Richard needs to find out what it is, but he doesn't want to cost the driver money if he can avoid it. No, I think it's in the floor. Is it the floor? Yeah. But what is it? I think, I think it's ribs. We've got to make a decision as to whether this is worth offloading or, 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 or not. The team are all highly trained mechanics, so Richard decides to try to access the suspicious area from underneath. Customs officers also take on gangs involved in carousel fraud, which steal money from the VAT system. It works like this. Criminals set up fake companies to import high-value goods VAT-free. The goods get exported back out to fake companies in Europe, at which point VAT is reclaimed. These shipments get stamped at the border, but then simply turn around and come back into the UK. The same goods go in and out of the country again and again. In 2001, a man was at the center of a carousel fraud so massive, it would take the next six years to bring him to justice. By looking at him and financial profiling of uh, uh, we basically determined that in a space of three years, he'd gone from being a, a pallet repairer um, to a multi-millionaire. He became a major thorn in the side of, uh, of attacking the UK's uh, VAT system and uh, we, we embarked on what became an eight-month long surveillance operation to identify those he was associating with, those he was trading with. We effectively identified a total of seven people. They were just average people, so they weren't particularly well-educated people and certainly uh, not with a business background. Day after day, the surveillance team looked on as the fraud increased. Their six accomplices gradually lost control. The goods were going round and round on the carousel so fast they forgot who was selling what to who. They, they, they became blasé, and uh, as often you see within uh, fraudulent activities, they, they did get greedy. Um, it's, it's too much of a good thing. In May 2002, it culminated in a meeting at the Trafford Centre in Manchester about keeping the fraud on track. And, of course, they were unaware that they were un under surveillance at the time. The surveillance team tracked all the suspects to the meeting and captured it all on film. Whereupon we were all able to get inside and, in effect, get into the CCTV control room for the Trafford Centre, uh, zoom in and record the whole meeting, uh, a surveillance officer's dream. With the gang making around £10 million a week from the fraud, tensions were clearly running high. The meeting at the Trafford Centre was the first time that they'd actually all been filmed together. Come the end of the meeting, when the paperwork appeared to be sorted out, they all got up and it was very jovial, much backslapping, hugging, as if there were no problems. But in fact, their problems were about to get a lot worse. The officers had decided enough was enough. On the morning of the 8th of July 2002, the carousel of the conspiracy was taken out. The 217 fake companies had stolen over 180 million pounds, and it took four years to sift through the mountains of paperwork. The nine-month trial found six of the seven guilty as charged, who all received at least five years in prison. Seen as the organizer, <laughs> received the heaviest sentence. Who was the principal who received a 12 and a half year prison sentence. It was a very rewarding result for the effort that had been put in and, and the signal to the criminal fraternity as a whole that um, you know, we are going to take these frauds seriously and you do get uh, similar sentences to what you can get in major, major drug cases. Back in Dover, however, a lengthy search has found nothing. I think you've just got to use a bit of common sense at the end. So at the end of the day, we're going to charge you 150 quid to offload it, find nothing, or we just make a judgment. First time in Anglia, the car is running, and it's probably for this control. If they have to, they have to. Richard decides the truck doesn't need to be offloaded, and the happy driver can carry on and deliver his load.
But on the bay next door, a white van has been pulled, and this time, it's a hit. The van's full of cigarettes destined for the UK's black market, but not anymore. The drivers have been arrested and taken into custody. They um, stopped the vehicle and questioned them. And, uh, whilst they questioned the driver, they um, went in the load and examined the load. And on opening a couple of boxes, one of the pallets um, detected large quantities of cigarettes. It's a serious crime, but their efforts to avoid detection aren't quite so easy to take seriously. Obviously, it's failed. Design in a vain hope that we wouldn't detect these, but uh, it's, it's kind of uh, laughable. But aluminium trays, I don't know whether they were hoping our x ray eyes wouldn't go through them or it just seems, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's a cardboard box with cigarettes in it, and we will, <laughs> we we're going to find them. So. In just one van load, the officers have seized over a million illegal cigarettes. The cannabis found in Gatwick was valued at £55,000. The man has since pleaded guilty. The female passenger pleaded not guilty and will stand trial soon. <laughs>Bristol, early morning flights are being targeted by customs officers, clamping down on passengers attempting to profit from cheap and illegal tobacco from outside the EU. Um, colleagues at the back are having a look, see if they can pick out any cigarettes or tobacco, possibly drugs as well. I'll stop whoever needs to be stopped. Yeah, we've got uh, a, just the one bag, is a black and grey big Okay, thank you. It's back coming through now. And watches closely to identify the passenger. Go with the white t-shirt. Then waits for him to walk through the green channel. If he has cigarettes, it's at this point an offence has been committed. Are you aware of um, the allowances of what you are actually allowed to bring back from Turkey with regards to cigarettes and tobacco? No. Okay. Did you purchase any tobacco, uh, cigarettes, yeah. alcohol? Who are they for? Are they? Uh, right. They say they've been given false yeah. information in Turkey. He's actually got somewhere in the region of 4,000 cigarettes, and you are only allowed 200. So that's quite excessive amount to bring back, really. You just go by what they allow you and pay the consequences possibly it's going to be an expensive mistake and gives the man the bad news it's an offense because you didn't declare it if you'd have declared well, it when you came, no when you came in before yeah. before you came through the channels if you'd have come to one of us and said got well, this amount excuse me i've got to the end of that thing there's no something to declare or nothing to declare there is a red point down there with a the phone it's, uh, it's, it's right by the bag, where the bags come out. As a possibility, you would have been allowed to pay the duty on the cigarettes. But for an amount like this, 5,000 cigarettes, when you're actually only allowed to bring back 200, it's just too much. It's too much. I'm sorry. In Dover, customs officers are hunting for smugglers on a different scale. And trucks carrying certain cargoes set the alarm bells ringing. This lorry full of chipboard is a prime target. Well, the vehicle looks a bit, a bit dodgy, yeah. Armed with their giant X-ray, customs can quickly scan huge trucks and innocent drivers can be sent happily on their way. This load is chipboard, the sun's intact, you're free to scan. Thank you. So we're looking, looking for any inconsistency. I've been told the load's chipboard, so it should just be the same all the way through. There's something in there that shouldn't be there. This here, there's a shadow across the centre there. You see the shadow even more there, right across the centre. The X-ray has picked up a large anomaly, which needs further investigation. Shall I? 
Sneaky. Okay, cool. Okay. It looks highly suspicious. So the truck will now need to be offloaded. It will take hours, meaning a long delay for the driver. Back in Bristol, the man who's had his cheap Turkish cigarette seized by Anne isn't going quietly. After her 12-hour night shift, Anne's doing her best to keep calm. There's one, there's one rule for one person, one rule for a different person. One customs officer will allow one, one customs officer will allow something totally different. This is the kind of thing that puts small businesses out of business and that is what they try to stop. No, it isn't. It's getting the money from the, from the government. It's, right. a, it's a, a large amount and it wasn't declared before you came through the channels. You actually came through the channels you without making... What channels are you talking about? This, this point down here yeah. these, you that just, you walked through. The man doesn't have a leg to stand on, and Anne's patience right, is being tested to the limit. I understand at this point there is not a green channel because there is construction work yeah. taking place, yeah. but everybody that wants to declare something yeah. should either speak to one of our officers that is stood here, or right. this red point here, there is a phone, and if you pick it up, you will be connected to a customs officer and you will need to declare what you have. This is a declaration. If you make this, we offer you to pay the duty. Unfortunately, you didn't do that. Well, I had to stop you. I came from there. That... I walked over to here. Yes. I'm looking for my baggage. I come round here. I get my baggage. I look here. Nothing to declare. Arrivals from European Union. Whoosh. Where is something to declare? This is oh, now something to on, declare. Yes. Hang on, hang on. Where is something to declare? Well, it no, doesn't need to it. say. Yeah, play the so game. It doesn't need to say something to declare. You can read, obviously, and that. Nothing to declare. Big letters. Yes, that is. I'm not going to argue anymore. Look, goods to declare. Red point. Warning: well, If you have well, failed to make the that. appropriate. I didn't know that. All I. I, I'm yeah, not going to argue about it anymore. Okay. You do have the right to appeal yeah. against my decision. Um, the rules are the rules. I'm sorry, I don't make those rules. I know, it's just the way, it's just, you know, one to one, one to another. Do I keep these, can I? Yes. As a final act of generosity, Anne decides to let them have back their allowance. But the man's angry mother doesn't know how to keep quiet either. I think they should be sorted out. They're telling us one thing and laws another thing, though. I'm sorry, but I disagree with that. Undercover officers also take on cigarette smugglers, but on a global scale. In 2003, investigators in Bristol got a tip-off about a second-hand furniture dealer called Smith smuggling cigarettes from the Far East. Smith's level of business, his income tax returns, didn't reflect on the lifestyle he, he appeared to enjoy. He had a, a large house and a swimming pool. It was decided that we would mount a surveillance operation on Smith to identify his associates and to gather evidence to support a, a likely prosecution for cigarette smuggling. One of these uh, associates was, was a gentleman in Birmingham called George George visited Malaysia on a number of occasions and it was, uh, it was obvious that those visits were to, uh, to organise the uh, eventual importation of containers. The investigation uncovered an extremely well-organised criminal gang bringing in containers of cigarettes to Southampton Container Port. What they were actually doing was piggybacking containers of flat pack bunk beds from Malaysia and China. The cigarettes were in identical boxes to the flat pack bunk beds. The only difference was no bunk beds. During the surveillance, officers in Southampton x-rayed a container hiding over two million cigarettes. But to guarantee a conviction and ensure the maximum sentence, officers also wanted to prove that Smith was responsible for coordinating the importation, which meant proving links to the Far East. It was clear that in, in Operation Commute that Smith must have had contacts in the, in the Far East. One 
person identified through the surveillance was, was a Malaysian national female. Smith and the woman were clearly unaware that they were the focus of a high-level surveillance operation. In, the, in July of 2003, officers surveilled Smith and the Malaysian female at Heathrow Airport. They surveilled the lady checking in for a flight to Malaysia. The officers searched her bags covertly and found exactly what they needed. She was totally unaware that the examination had taken place and officers found a diary and this female's diary contained handwritten notes relating to containers, freight charges, Far Eastern ports. The evidence of the, of the diary and Smith's association with, uh, with this Malaysian female it put him up the ladder a few runs. It confirmed that he was an organiser of this, this fraud. At this point, the officers decided it was time to seize the containers and stop the illegal gang's trade route. Their funds were being, were being starved. They were running out of money. They needed to think quick. They decided to use another company to import, or another company name to import their containers. Um, the surveillance carried on on Smith. On one occasion, Smith was seen to to leave one car and join some associates in another car. A keen, keen officer walked along, had a look through the window, and there was a piece of paper on, on the back seat. And that piece of paper had a container number on. That container number was the next container we seized. With a strong case against the two ringleaders assured, Smith and his associates were arrested. He had actually successfully, with George, imported 10 containers. With the help of our detection colleagues in Southampton, we seized 11 containers that contained 25 million cigarettes. The total revenue evaded was around about nine million pounds. With the sheer scale of the fraud and the overwhelming evidence, investigators weren't surprised by the sentences handed down. Smith was sentenced to three years, eight months imprisonment. George received a, a prison sentence of three years and 11 months. Some people would say they played the game. Uh, on this occasion, uh, the authorities won. Still to come, officers stop a tricky customer in Gatwick. Why have you been out there for a week? I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm a customs officer. Yeah, but I don't need to tell you. All right. That's not your business. Coming up, a passenger's playing up in Gatwick. Um, I haven't finished yet. Sir, let this go. This is my document to read my stuff. Stay there. Off the coast of Cornwall, customs cutter searcher is patrolling the limits of British waters, hunting for yachts headed for the UK from the Caribbean. Right, let's we'll leave us at Mary's, the Silly Isles, and we're going out to the west. Um, and we're doing what we call a deep sea sweep. We're looking for anything that's out there, small commercial ships, yachts, fishing vessels, and we'll have a look at them, and within the 12 mile limit we'll board them and, and see what they're up to. The Atlantic is increasingly dangerous at this time of year, but smugglers are prepared to risk their lives in the hope of sneaking drugs into the UK undetected. Territorial waters, uh, we've got the power to board any vessel and ask people questions of where they've come from and search the vessels. Colin uses a powerful radar to scan the ocean for yachts. It tells us there's a target there, and that allows us to watch his course and speed, see where he's going, which direction he's going for a start, and then we'll go and have a, actually have a look at him. It's nice to find things, um, because it gives the guys a buzz. Um, that's what you're here for in the first place. But today, there's nothing around but a vast ocean. And it's easy to see why the cutter crews are the most sought-after jobs in customs. Beautiful, aren't they? And that was the game you used to do. You could see how close you get to the basket shark. The chipboard truck with a suspicious X-ray is now in the search bay. The German driver is questioned while Michael tries to uncover anything stashed inside the load. Well, it's a load of chipboard. Um, so all we've done is we drilled in two holes towards the back. As I drilled through, it kind of went down about that thing and then just gave way. Um, and as I pulled the drill bit out, I can a little bit of tobacco and also I can see a little bit of tin foil. The only problem is, is with wood sometimes this, because the drill, it burns it when you're, when you're drilling. It can smell a little bit like, um, you know, kind of tobacco type smells. It could be a false alarm, 
but as the top layer of chipboard comes off, the source of the tobacco smell becomes very clear. Michael has uncovered a massive haul of cigarettes in a coffin concealment. The driver is arrested immediately. Well, there's a large quantity of tobacco, uh, mild cigarettes. Um, I'm guessing there's some other bits and pieces and boxes and stuff, but we'll find out in a bit. Well, the chipboard load's quite normal and um, it's quite common. But as you can see, there are, it's easy to conceal items within it because you can, it's only cheap wood, it's a cheap load, they can get rid of it quite easily and they can cut holes in it. While the driver's questioned to see if he's involved, the officers need to count up the cigarettes. Was it? Yeah, 160,000 in there, in the boxes. Yeah. 160,800 um, on the pallet. So in total, it's 320,800. Yeah. So I'll tell you about six. In all, nearly two million cigarettes. Because when you spend so much time looking in lorries and, and not finding stuff, because obviously, you know, not everyone's bringing things in. So it's, it's good to find something. That's a, a good number as well. This is what we kind of want to get, really, because this is the big numbers. In Gatwick, the baggage x-ray has picked up a suspiciously empty suitcase and customs want to talk to the passenger. Officers have to tackle all kinds of passenger and some are more cooperative than others. Hi sir. Hi, where have you come from today? Tripoli, yeah? Okay, just want to bring your bag over here for us. Just here. Officers ask simple questions to work out if further investigation is needed. But this man is making things difficult. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll try and make this as painless as possible. Well, you need to be quick, yeah. I'll put, I understand I've got to do my job, though, yeah. Just, uh, first of all, whereabouts are you going to in the UK? Where, where's home for you here? Well, I live here. Yeah, yeah, where's yeah, home? Yeah, get in your system. All right, if you tell me, then I won't have to go and check it. Yeah, you go and check it. No, if you do, just tell me where you go. Give me a break, but just let me go. Why have you been out there for a week? I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm a customs officer. Yeah, but I don't need to tell you. All That's right. not your business. Did you pack the bags yourself? Yes, yes. And do you know what's inside your bags? Listen, I have just opened it. All right. Can you well, if you can op open your bag up and let's have a quick look inside again. Officers were alerted by the empty bag, but are now very intrigued by the man's demeanor. Just got an empty bag, yeah? All right. Okay, that's all right. No, no, no. I you won't need to take everything out. My son is just looking for me. Just get me. All right, sir. All right. Sir. Get my nerves. All right. You leave, leave me to this, all right? And I'll finish, and then you can be on your way. All right? Just let me do my job. Finish and let okay. me go, idiot. How much money have you got there? You can count it. It is your money. No, it's, it's your money, so, yeah, so you, you tell, tell me how much you got. What does that have to do with you? Sorry? What does that have to do with you? I just would like to know how much you've got there. I don't need to tell you. All right, fair enough. This you. Unless the man starts to cooperate, this baggage search could take quite some time. Searcher's deep sea sweep has so far been a washout. We've been heading back in for some minutes now. Unfortunately, there wasn't very much out there today at all. We've searched quite a big area, but all this we've found is lots and lots of dolphins. But heading back in, the radar picks up a target. This is the target here, this chap here. The yacht appears to be coming from the Canaries, a frequent transit point for drugs from Africa and the Caribbean. In this neck of the woods, but uh, most of where those vessels come from, um, into this area. Uh, I'd suspect that if there's anything there, it would be drugs. And it's possible it'd be quite well hidden aboard the yacht as well. Officers boarding vessels at sea never know what they might face. The drugs trade is worth billions, and smugglers are willing to protect their goods with force. Smugglers also try hard not to stand out from the crowd, so even the most innocent-looking boat needs to be treated with suspicion.
This boat seems harmless, but they can't afford to take anything for granted. It's just a customs visit. One of my colleagues is just going to have a quick look around. How many people are there on board in total? Four of us. It's just the four, is it? Nobody else down below. Just let my colleague have a quick look, come back to me and let me know. Do you have any um, any drugs on board? Cigarettes, spirits, narcotics, firearms, guns, knives, explosives? You've got knives for the kitchen, that's fine. While the officers question the crew, the officers searching below deck signals the all clear. He's happy. He's happy. He does that when he's, when he's happy. <laughs> they decide that the boat is clean, and the happy crew sail off into the sunset. Yes, Ray Billy. Uh, that's us just left the Dutch yacht. <laughs> But back in Gatwick, it's not such plain sailing. Um, I haven't finished yet. It's all right. Oh. Sir, let this go. This is my document. That's how I'm Yeah. So I need to have a look at that. No, no, no. All right. This is my document. This is special. That's special, is it? Yeah. Right, I need to have this a quick look. No. This is my document. That's, how, that's special. Don't need to have a look at this. Anything you have in your baggage, sir, is liable for me to have a look at. Yeah, right? I don't need to my stuff. Stay there. Stay there. The man's erratic behaviour is still causing concern. All right, you're not being very helpful, sir, are you? Just want to leave that stuff there a second. Some background checks reveal this isn't his first brush with the authorities. Yes, CRO Fits in. <laughs> to rule out any possibility the man's carrying drugs, they need to search him and swap his shoes. I've spoken to an independent senior officer, all right? And they've authorised a rub down search of your person. What that mean? Just like a, a pat down search like that, okay? What we do is we'll take your stuff with you and we'll go to it with a private room just out there, right? Out the back, the man continues to make things difficult. Yeah, just place, place it on the bed for us. That's right, just place it on the bed and you, you can see it when it's done. I'd, I'd rather you just place it on the bed. Sir, please. You can see it. I'd rather you just place it on the bed. Do a swab of that. Um, it's got two mobile phones plus another SIM card. But again, nothing on the shoes, so I, there's no other reason to hold them. So, all right. In the end, it was all a lot of fuss about nothing. The, the smallest reason can just sum it up. Every year at the port of Dover, millions of passengers make the crossing to the UK from France. Border agency officers work tirelessly to check vehicles entering the country for illegal items. Today, a British passenger has just arrived home after driving back from a holiday in the south of Spain. Are you travelling with anyone else at all? Oh, I have an idea of the bad, but he just didn't drive back really. OK. What's your dad doing now? He's still, he's still there, getting drunk. OK. Do you have any cigarettes, any tobacco goods at all? Sorry, cigarettes. Sniffer dog Cheska is brought in to assess the man's car for any cash or traces of drugs. Large sums of cash brought into the country is checked to see whether it has links to criminal activity. So, Amy, she's got a thousand euros in the vehicle. Right. Or... Yes, please. Okay, can you just do that? Just... Yeah, just wait one second Sorry, until mate. I finish the car. Thank you. Okay, Mick, do you want to get that money out? The man fetches an envelope of cash from the front of the car. 
Suspiciously, he also brings out some sugar in a plastic bag. With the man's story starting to change, Cheska is brought in to do a thorough check inside the car. Uh, 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 uh. Come here. Come here. Good girl. And it doesn't take long for her to make an indication on something hidden deep within the boot. As the evidence starts to rack up, officers move in to examine what Cheska has found. Concealed in the side of the boot is an envelope containing a further £1,400 in cash. It could be various reasons. It could be if he's got something else in the car, it might be money for bringing drugs in. He's put it in the car to try and hide it so it doesn't get picked up. Obviously, now we're going to have a little bit look further to see if we can find anything else in the car. As officers continue with a thorough search, there are growing concerns about the man's erratic behavior. He's um, laughing. You can, you can hear this tapping in the background. That's him throwing this bag of sugar. People try and look and try and act normally, but uh, in fact, it just, it just doesn't look normal, does it? So his story, the way he's acting, the dog indication, the concealment in the car, it all points in a very, very strong direction of this, something concealed in the car. It's early afternoon at Bristol Airport. A flight has just arrived from Malaga in Spain, and officers are x-raying bags to check for any illegal goods. One bag appears to be full of cigarettes, so a description is radioed through to the officers inside the terminal. Um, black hole dog. Got, um, Chelsea, um, OK, I'll pick it up. Thank you. The bag is placed back on the luggage carousel, and Officer Erica waits for the owner to pass through the customs channels. Hi, guys. Are you travelling together? Yeah. yeah. Can you just sit this way a yeah. second? Where have you just arrived from? Uh, Malaga. Malaga? Yeah. And how long have you been away for? Four days. Four days? Was it holiday? Yeah. Yeah? OK. And I take it this is all your luggage? Yeah. You packed it all yourselves? Yeah? Fully aware of all the contents? Yeah. Yeah? OK. Did you purchase anything over there that you brought back with you? Any gifts for anyone? Cigarettes, tobacco, alcohol? kids and t-shirts. Right, OK. So no cigarettes and tobacco? OK. And who are they for? Both of you. You both smoke, do you? OK. And how much have you... You don't at the moment? No, she's not. She's been there for you. Oh, right, OK. Big gold back to Spain. Ah, uh, right, OK, so how much have you got? How about a gag How much, how many cigarettes, tobacco, how much have you got? Quantities of cigarettes purchased in Spain are only allowed back into the UK if they're for personal use. The couple will need to convince Erica that all their tobacco products are for themselves. As the bags are checked, the packages just keep coming, raising the suspicion that the goods may not be for personal use. How much did all of this cost you? So, you are the only one that smokes at the moment, yeah? Basically, I smoke the only yeah. She smokes the things, she's off and says, I thought I'm not going back abroad, so basically I wanted to buy it. Oh, right, okay. How long do you expect this to last you? Yeah? Do you normally bring stuff back when you go abroad? Or? If we go away to Spain, we do, yeah. Yeah. Have you got any rolling papers on you at all? On me? Yeah. No papers? No? no? Okay, you've got an open packet there, though, have yeah. you? Okay, if I asked you to roll a cigarette, would you be able to do that for me? Yeah? Okay, I'll just get some papers then. If the passenger is unable to roll a convincing cigarette, it will support Erica's hunch that the goods aren't for personal use and they'll all be seized. Back in Dover, officers are still investigating a young man who's been found with £1,400 in cash hidden in the boot of a car. Swap tests are conducted on the steering wheel and on a bag of sugar the man has been clutching. Officers want to find out whether he's come into contact with any drugs. So this will read, 
different types of drugs, basically everything that is prohibited um, coming in. Nothing on the steering wheel. So this one's come off the bag of sugar. And there's no trace on either of it. So maybe it's just sugar. A bit worrying if he's lobbing half a kilo of coke around just in, the, in the car. Wouldn't. Despite no trace of drugs, officers are still concerned the man isn't telling the whole truth. The search of the car is taken to the next level. Um, also, we've just put up on the ramp now to look underneath. Because when it's down the floor, you can sort of look underneath, but you can't get a full, full picture um, just to see if anything's been placed in the natural space underneath the car. Obviously, you get like these the sump guards. Obviously, sometimes the more expensive cars have covers underneath to make sure that's not being utilised to, to smuggle drugs. Further suspicious information comes to light that the car actually belongs to the man's godfather. Can you tell me what your godfather is? Because it's this car that you're in. Yeah. Because some of this money has been found in which we'll talk about. But yeah. What can you tell me about? What, what, Friend, yeah, 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 The man claims to know nothing about the cash found in the boot of his godfather's car. Despite a number of suspicious signs, with no concrete evidence, officers are forced to release the man with all of his cash. The outcome is very frustrating because there's something not right there. The officers had a good look at the vehicle and what more can they do, really? And that's the frustration. Back at Bristol, a couple importing thousands of cigarettes are trying to convince officers they're for personal use and not a legal resale. The male passenger has been asked to roll a cigarette to establish whether he himself is a smoker. Do you normally roll them yourself? Yeah, but not in my <laughs> no. no, basically there's a guideline amount. We've got to satisfy ourselves that it's not for any other purpose than your own personal use. After two attempts, the man has produced a pretty unconvincing rolly. All right, I'll be back in a second then. That's his second attempt at cigarette. <laughs> um, if that's what, if that's what you're yeah. doing, rolly, it'll last them about two years. <laughs> Erica remains unhappy with the couple's story. Right, um, based on the amount that you brought in, you're not over the guidelines, but I'm not entirely satisfied. Obviously, you're bringing in cigarettes, even though you're not going to be smoking them for a certain amount of months. OK, um, what I want to do is just interview you both okay, and ask you some more questions. You're not under arrest or anything like that, so you are free to leave, but obviously if you do go, the goods stay here. Oh, right. Okay. So would that be preferable? Go away and come back, that would be better. Yeah? No, you have to leave everything here. What we do is we detain it. I'll write out a detention notice for you. I'll just do the paperwork, okay? And then you can just sign it and we'll go from there. Okay, yeah. The passengers decide that their time is more precious than their 1,800 euro cargo and choose to leave the airport empty-handed. It's hard to tell. That's why we carry out the interviews, go into a bit more detail. You didn't really do a successful attempt at rolling a cigarette, to be honest. As the couple leave the airport, they're given 30 days in which to arrange the follow-up meeting. For now, their goods remain seized. Coming up, one man's shoes sets alarm bells ringing. Trains or what? Look at that, traces of cocaine. Coming up, questions about large sums of money leave one passenger seeing red. I am listening and you're talking different questions calm down, madam. all the time. I am calm down. <laughs>
At Gatwick Airport, holidaymakers have just returned to the UK from Ibiza. Young travellers visiting the party island are often stopped and checked for the presence of drugs on their return. The baggage of one such passenger has tested positive for the presence of cocaine and amphetamines. Okay, so it's very high, it just went off the scale. Yeah. When, when I sort of um, asked him if there's likely to be anything there, he got very touchy. Yeah, he's been quite yeah. touchy since. Okay. Due to the unusually high reading, Officer Andy decides to take the passenger for a strip search. Right, sir, I'd like to have a word with you in a private office, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If you'd like to come with me with your bags. All right. Thank you. Can I just ask, do you know how long this is going to be? Difficult to say at this time, OK? I'll explain everything when well, we get in there, right. yeah. Andy's colleague, Cathy, has gained some important information about the passenger's health. He's lactic and he hasn't had any medication. He hasn't right. eaten or drunk for two days. So he's come back because he's started having mini seizures. Right. So just be careful. Yeah, OK. Can you um, let the senior officer know? Yeah. OK, okay thanks. Yeah. Right, my colleague's just said to me that he suffered from epilepsy, is that right, yeah? Um, and are you, are you actually okay at the moment? Or? Well, I've come back to get home and sort things out. I've been up for two days, I'm getting medication right now. Do you need medication urgently? Not, or? not right now. Okay, but for a few minutes you're okay? Yeah, yeah. No. Despite his health issues, the passenger is happy to proceed with the search. You've got the right to object, okay? No, that's all right. I'll get out of Thanks. As well as a strip search, the man's shoes are taken away to be swab tested. A drug hit from this test may suggest he's carrying packages inside his body. And with another extremely high trace, the man has more explaining to do. Traces of what? Traces of cocaine. They've been taking or using any controlled substance. Why would your trainers be? Check over the mic. No, no, it's not a case of that. It's like you might have stuff inside you. Inside of me? Yeah. Do an X-ray on me. An X-ray will be the quickest way to know if the man is telling the truth. OK. Right. Um, because of that, OK, I've got to arrest you. You're going arrest me? OK, I'm arresting you on suspicion of the illegal importation of a controlled drug. OK. You, I must caution, you don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? Yes. OK. The man's fate now hangs on the results of the X-ray. Birmingham Airport flies to over 100 destinations across the world. In departures, Officer Dean and his sniffer dog Max are on the search for passengers with large sums of cash. Officers are permitted to question passengers carrying over a thousand euros to ensure the cash has no criminal connections. Anything over 10,000 euros must be declared. You got cash in your pocket there? You got cash on you? Max has indicated on a group of passengers travelling to Pakistan, so they're taken aside for questioning. Where are you guys travelling to today? Where are you travelling to, all of you? OK, how long are you going to Islamabad for? For one and a half months. One and a half months, OK. Ask customs, we want to move to a cash through this airport. The dogs indicate that you're potentially carrying cash. How much cash are you guys carrying? I have 2,000. 2,000? Yeah. What you got? Two and a half. Two and a half, madam? And you, sir? 1,300. 1,300? OK, what do you do for a living? What's your occupations? What yeah, McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah. And you, sir? Me, yeah, I uh, live in Holland. I work in Holland. You work in Holland? Yeah. Okay. How long have you been in the UK from Holland? Just come around here, guys. Just come around here. Okay, what's, what's your occupation? I uh, work in the laundry. Laundry? Yeah. Okay, can you just show me the money, guys? Okay. Everyone, please. Thank you. The passengers are frustrated by the questioning and reluctantly hand over the cash in bundles of 50 euro notes. All the money you're carrying is your own money, yeah? Okay. Because it's uh, also Salab there, the tsunami. I have to help people out. Okay, that's fair enough. It's my own country. Two of them are from this country, you expect them to be carrying sterling. 
possibly Pakistani rupees, but they're all carrying euros. So my suspicion is, and they're all carrying 50s, and could it possibly be that the money belongs to one person and he's asking his friends to carry a bit of money each so it looks less conspicuous. So has any of you three been in trouble with the police or customs in this country? Yeah, me. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody on my passport. So somebody impersonated you? Yeah. On your passport? Yeah. So you committed an offence, have you been arrested? No, 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 no
So where did where you, you get, get the money? You, you can see the, the story just keeps changing. They mention that they're going there for the tsunami. And one of the passion now mentions that he's going to Pakistan for a wedding, his own wedding. So we have a few discrepancies into the intended use of the cash. I don't know. What we'll do just now is we'll make a phone call to our boss and see what he wants to do. With the departure time looming, a decision needs to be made soon if they're to make their flight. No, there's no direct link to a crime. It's dodgy, but it's not enough to, I think, to make the decision. Okay, boss, cheers, bye. It was a very tricky one, and we don't, unfortunately, time is against us on this one. The guys are doing all the checks, we're satisfied. Thank you for your patience. That's it, okay? Sorry, I've delayed you. No problem. We're just doing our job, guys, that's all it is. On this occasion, the four travellers are allowed to leave with all of their cash. There just wasn't enough evidence to substantiate that cash or any criminal link to it. We weren't entirely satisfied that the cash belonged to each individual. We still believe the cash belonged to one person, but because of the time constraints and the fact that they're based in another European country, we just couldn't do any further checks. So we let them proceed with their journey. The couple at Bristol Airport, who had 30 days to arrange a follow-up meeting about their cigarettes and tobacco, never got in touch. All of their goods were later destroyed.